Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the Mushroom Dungeon. We are all set up in front of the device I like to call a laminar flow hood, and though it is not technically a laminar flow hood, it is a tabletop HEPA filtration clean air device, but whatever the hell it is, we are set up in front of it, and we are ready to refresh some liquid culture jars. So I've been getting a lot of questions lately on how long your LC jars will last under refrigeration and when you should refresh them and how to do that. So we're going to cover that today. I'm going to show you a couple different techniques on how to refresh your liquid culture jars. One is my standard technique and the second one I'm going to show you is a way to really supercharge your cultures when they seem to be lagging a little bit. So the short answer is I refresh my liquid culture once a year. For most of your wood loving gourmet mushrooms that most people are growing once a year works out fine. Now other cultures like morels, cordyceps that senesce very quickly, those you wouldn't want to hang on to for a year. You would want to use them much more quickly than that. But in general, we're talking once a year. And I do like to switch up my liquid culture recipe every now and then to give the mycelium some different nutrients to feed on and avoid enzyme blindness. Enzyme blindness can happen when you keep feeding your mycelium the same nutrient source over and over and over again and they only have the enzymes to digest that nutrient source because it's all they've been exposed to so when you go to move them to grain or to substrate they may lag behind a little bit there's lots of recipes out there you can use caro right now i have caro with a little bit of peptone my standard recipe you can use dried light malt extract honey it's a lot of different recipes out there. So these jars here are going to be master jars. So they do not have filters in the lids. All they have is an injection port, which is high temp RTV. So because they don't have filters in the lids, I did have to manually equalize the pressure after the pressure cooker run. I use the exact same technique I show in my Liquid Culture 202 Master Jar video. I will link that in the description to this video. So these jars just came out of the pressure cooker. As I mentioned, this is my standard Liquid Culture recipe. Caro syrup, a little bit of soy peptone, which gives them some color, and that peptone really makes your mycelium take off. So it is good stuff. It's a little expensive, but for me, it's worth it. Just have our foil lids over top of these jars, help keep those jar lids clean. I'm going to remove those shortly. So what I did is I have seven jars on the table right now. I'm holding one back to show you guys a different technique. And I have seven syringes right there. So these syringes I just pulled off my old liquid culture jars. We're just going to inject those right into the new jars and let them go ahead and take off on this new LC. When you go to refresh these, it's a good time too to kind of take inventory of your liquid culture stock and decide what cultures do I want to play with this next year, which ones can I maybe let go. You can always add new ones along the way. But for now, I've picked seven strains that I have laid out on the table in those syringes. So I'm gonna go ahead and inject those into those seven jars. So for my final jar, I'm gonna show you this technique on how to supercharge your liquid culture with a grain spawn jar. So this is a yellow morel strain that I started from wild spores this spring. Morel mycelium is tan, that's why it's kind of hard to see, but you can see those sclerotia forming there on the inside surface of the jar. So this is a really vigorous yellow morel strain, but I want to capture this into liquid culture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull 20 cc's of sterile LC out of one of my jars and I'm going to inject it right into this grain jar. And that LC is going to pick up a bunch of little mycelium fragments. It's going to get all those good enzymes from that mycelium ripping through that grain spawn. And then I'm going to suck a little bit back out and I'm going to use that to start my LC jar. This is a really good way, like I said, to supercharge one of your liquid cultures. If it seems to be lagging a little bit, just picking up all these little mycelium fragments that have been chowing through this grain and all those good enzymes in there too, it's really going to get you a jar of some super strong, vigorous liquid culture. You do want to use a good sized syringe when you do this. I'm going to be using a 20 cc syringe because the mycelium and the grain is going to absorb a lot of that liquid. So there's no way you're going to get 20 cc's of LC back out of this jar. It's just not going to happen. 
but you don't need a lot. If you can just get a couple few cc's back out, you'll be good to go. That'll be plenty to start a liquid culture jar. And also this grain jar will not be junk when we're done with this. It is gonna be a little saturated, over wet, but I'm gonna move this right to pasteurized fuel pellets. So you're not losing a grain jar by doing this either. You're just getting some awesome supercharged liquid culture. So I'm just gonna change the camera angle a little bit here, guys, and you can watch me do these jars in front of the hood. I'm gonna start out with the seven easy, just the straight injection jars, and then we'll go on to the, the grain spawn capture method after that. Yeah, so those first jars are pretty straightforward. Direct inject and you're done. Just move them to a storage tote to incubate. And now on to the interesting part. First thing I'm gonna do is shake up that grain jar. It's gonna break up all that mycelium in there. And that will help our liquid culture pick up a ton of little mycelium fragments along with all those other goodies in there. So we're just gonna try and shoot that jar full of 20 cc's, hopefully get a little back out. What we get back out is going right back in that LC jar and we should be ready to rock. Alright guys, that worked pretty well. You can see we got a little under 10 cc's back out of the jar, which was actually better than I was expecting. That should be plenty to get this rolling. Typically when I shoot up a jar, I'm looking for 5 cc's or so, unless it's an old syringe, I might just shoot the whole thing in there. But this should be plenty to get this jar rolling. I'm just going to put it in a storage tote with the other jars, let them incubate. Typically it's at least two weeks of incubation before your jars are nice and chunky, sometimes up to a month or two depending on the strain and species. But we'll just uh, keep an eye on these guys, see how they do. I just want to show you this. This is the bag of spawn that I made from that jar that I squirted up with the liquid culture. And you can see this colonized really nicely. I got a really solid firm cake of sawdust and grain spawn here. All those little white dots there are sclerotia this strain is just making sclerotia like crazy i'm hoping it will make some in the ground and then we'll get some morel mushrooms next spring but i wanted to show you this as i mentioned when you do inject into your grain jar that grain spawn is not junk 
it will be a little moist, a little wetter than we want it. But when you mix it with a bunch of sawdust like this, hardwood fuel pellets, that little bit of extra moisture isn't a really a big deal in the grand scheme of things. That sawdust will soak it right up and you can go ahead and use it for spawn. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and finish up this video. I want to show you what our liquid culture is looking like. Show you a few of these jars here. This is a direct inject Ganoderma lucidum. So I just pulled a syringe from the old jar, injected it into the new jar, and this one will be ready to rock for another year. Here's our Arecium Americanum. Nice and chunky, looking perfect. This one's ready to go in the fridge. Usually when they get to this level of chunk, I'll put them in the fridge because at this point they're ready to use. You can see the liquid itself is nice and clear. You don't want the actual liquid to be cloudy. This is amber in color because of the peptone, but it is nice and clear and transparent. If you get cloudiness, that's usually a sign of bacterial contamination. So we just want nice, clear nutrient broth here with chunky mycelium. That's what we're looking for. Here is our morel culture that we pulled from the grain jar. You can see same thing. It's looking, broth is nice and clear. But we got some really nice, chunky morel mycelium in there. So that one's looking good, too. Here's one more. This is a Flamelina Voluta Paste from Appalachian Gold. The best Anoki culture on the planet. Right there. Got that one renewed. Again, that was just a direct injection. So the moral of the story is you want to refresh your cultures about once a year, as a general rule. You can... For the most part, just pull some LC from your old jar and inject it into a new one. That'll work fine. It's good to switch up your recipe every couple years, I would say. Switch it up a little. Use a different sugar base or throw some peptone in, mix it up a little bit. Avoid that enzyme blindness. If you notice a culture is lagging behind a little bit, doesn't seem like it's colonizing like it used to, just seems a little slower, try this grain jar trick. It's a great way to refresh your cultures and just kind of supercharge them and get them really rocking and rolling again. So whenever you make new batches of liquid culture, it's a good idea too to test it out on a either some agar. If you like to work with agar, test it out on that. Or you can use a small grain jar. A lot of times I'll just use a half pint grain jar or something really small. And make sure it colonizes nice and cleanly before you go big time with it and avoid big time disappointment. So... Always verify that your cultures are clean on a small scale before going big. As always, hit me up in comments. Let me know what you think. Check out the description of the video for some links to other videos that I think you'll find useful. Also, now we are officially an affiliate with Micropose.com and sell some awesome mushroom cultivation supplies. You can now use promo code RENEGADE when you order for 10% off. So hit me up in comments, guys. Let me know what you think. I hope you found this useful in your liquid culture endeavors. And I will catch you next video.